Hi guys, movie recapped Queen here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today I'm going to show you a 2018 prehistorical adventure film, name Alpha. 20,000 years ago in prehistoric Europe, a small group of hunters led by their leader Tao gets ready to attack a herd of steppe bison. They create a wall of spears that causes the bison to stampede off a cliff, but three of them stay back, and one particular bull goes after Toe's son Keta. After savagely hitting him with its horns, it drags him to the edge of the cliff, where Keta falls to the abyss after Tao hits the beast with his spear. This all begins one week earlier, when the teenagers of the tribe are tested on their spear-making skills. The only ones to pass are Keta and his friend Kappa, so they will be brought to the last hunting expedition before winter comes. As part of the ritual that marks them as adults now, they also get beat up by the other men to learn that pain will journey with them, and they are blessed by the local shaman by the campfire. Later, while pretending to be asleep, Keta overhears Tao and his mother Ro talking. Ro does not think he is ready to hunt because he leads with his heart, not his spear, but Tao believes Keta must do his part and prove himself to the tribe. The next morning, the hunting party leaves after saying goodbye to their loved ones and getting the shaman's blessing, Ro even gives Keta an extra piece of fur as a safety token. The party begins traveling across the land by following the sacred path left by their ancestors, who have made a series of rock sculptures that leave a trail for them to follow, the hand paintings on them point at the direction they must take to the hunting ground. During the trip, they come across another hunting party led by Shi, an old friend of Toes who has recently lost his son. Both parties begin traveling together then. Whenever he has the chance, Keta tries to prove himself to his father, but he is not able to start a fire and cannot bring himself to kill the boar the other men capture, so he feels like a failure. One night, while they are eating by the fire, they hear a noise behind them, so they swiftly jump onto a defensive position. When nothing comes, they quickly relax, which proves to be a mistake. A cave lion suddenly jumps out and snatches Kappa, who it takes away to feed on. The next morning, the men build a cairn to give Kappa a memorial service that symbolizes the passing of one spirit to the afterlife. The trip continues with only stops to hunt and rest. One evening, when they find a large and safe cave to sleep in, Tao takes the chance to make Keta get a tattoo of the constellations just like him, that way he will always find a way home. It takes a good amount of days, but eventually, they find a trail of dump that takes them to a herd of steppe bison, which brings the story back to the beginning. As he falls, Keta tries to hold on to a rough cliff edge, but he slips and lands on a further ledge, where he breaks a leg and falls unconscious. Desperate to save his son, Tao tries to climb down, but his fellow hunters stop him, pointing out it is too late. While the men bring the sleds to carry the bison on, Tao stays by the edge of the cliff, crying in denial. Now that their hunt has been divided equally, Zai's party leaves on their own to return to their home, Sato's group has one last night of camping before convincing their leader it's time to move on. The following morning, Tao builds another cairn while tears of grief continue to fall. Many hours after the party is gone, a vulture lands on Keta and tries to feed on him. This makes him wake up, and after pushing the bird off him by wringing its neck, he realizes the situation he is in. Dragging his broken leg behind him, Keta tries to climb down, but there are not enough rough edges for him to hold on, and ends up hanging in there for a long, excruciating moment. Soon after, a storm arrives and begins flooding the ground below him, so Keta comes to terms with what he has to do and lets go of his grip, landing in the water and falling unconscious again. When he wakes up the next morning, it has stopped raining and the flooding is gone. After drinking water from a poodle and splinting his injured foot, Keta slowly makes his way back to the top of the cliff, where he finds the memorial his father left for him. But Keta kicks it out in frustration when he realizes he has been left alone and must find his way home on his own. Keta begins traveling alone. He feeds himself bugs, fills his canteen in any poodle he can find, and climbs trees to sleep safely at night away from predators. When a pack of wolves finds him in the middle of the day, Keta runs to a tree again, 
stabbing one of the wolves when it grabs his leg before he finally climbs to safety. He stays on top of the tree until the wolves get tired of waiting and they all leave except for the one Keta injured. He prepares a spear to finish it off, but he cannot bring himself to do it, so he decides to ignore it instead. Except Keta cannot do that either, the wolf's painful whining is too much to hear. Keta decides to help and, after tying up its snout not to get bitten, he picks up the wolf and carries it to the lake in order to clean its wound. Sadly they cannot rest there for long because there are hyenas nearby, so Keta carries the wolf again until they find shelter in a cave where they can sleep safely. The next morning, Keta finds a mortar near a bunch of bones and uses it to create a plant salve that he applies on his foot while the wolf manages to free his snout. Seeing as the animal is behaving, Keta decides to share his water with it, which the wolf finally accepts after lots of growling. Keta goes as far as cleaning the wound with the fur his mother gave him and sharing the worms he finds with the wolf as well. But worms are not enough to keep themselves fed, so Keta finally gets brave enough to make his first hunt. He kills a rabbit with a rock and even manages to start a fire at last to cook it. The wolf tries to take the rabbit from him, but Keta quickly pushes him away, remembering the lessons about leadership his father has taught him. He establishes dominance by always eating first and feeding the wolf after he is done. No matter how much he shares with it, though, the wolf still will not allow him to touch it. Winter is quickly approaching and Keta must find a way home before snow begins to fall. He does not think he can make it without his father, but he has to try. After putting together enough supplies and struggling with the wolf to get his fur back, Keta leaves the cave and begins walking his way back, feeling frustrated because the wolf will not stop following him no matter how many times he tells it to go away. Eventually, Keta gives up and accepts the wolf as his new travel companion, even training it to come over when he whistles. Their first attempts at hunting together are a complete bust, but after a few tries, they manage to find a way to sink their attacks and get their prey without too much effort. At night, Keta double-checks they are going in the right direction by using the constellation tattoo on his hand, and the wolf begins sleeping next to him, even allowing him to touch it now that he has gained his trust. After an afternoon spent in the lake bathing and fishing, Keta decides to name the wolf Alpha. Their trip is taking so long that winter finally catches up with them and snow starts to fall. One evening while they are eating by the bonfire, they are approached by a pack of wolves that turns out to be Alpha's family. Knowing what is like to miss your loved ones, Keta tells Alpha to go with them, so now he is left to continue traveling alone. As time passes, snowstorms become more common, so Keta is having difficulty making much progress each day, especially when he has a devastating dream of Tao arriving home and giving Ro the bad news. After a few days of walking through yet another storm, he comes across Alpha and its pack, but when he runs towards them, the ice breaks under his feet and he falls into the freezing water. As his mother's fur and most of his equipment float away, Keta hits the ice with his knife and manages to break enough to let Alpha drag him out. The two of them begin traveling together again, and later that night, Keta sleeps hugging Alpha to regain some warmth in his freezing body. After advancing a few more miles, they find a trail of tracks that they follow to a hut, but sadly, the owner has frozen to death. There is no food to be found, but Keta does grab a bow and arrow to hunt, ignoring Alpha's worry when he suddenly begins to cough up blood. Sometime later, the duo finds itself between a rock and a hard place. There are hyenas following them but also a very dangerous storm ahead of them, so they run until they find a cave to hide in. Unfortunately, the place is not empty, there is a cave lion that does not hesitate to attack them. Alpha fights it fiercely while Keta puts the arrow on his bow, concentrating to hit the right target. He manages to kill the lion and save Alpha, who still comes out heavily wounded from the fight. When they go back to very slowly traveling in the middle of the snowstorm, they find the sculpture that marks the sacred path, so Keta knows they must be close. His hope gets stronger when the northern lights appear above them one night, a sign that his ancestors must be guiding them. However, Alpha is too weak to keep going, and one day he finally collapses. Not wanting to leave his friend behind, 
Keta begins to carry the wolf in his arms, ignoring the fact he is also so weak and continues to cough up blood. The conditions are so harsh that Keta eventually collapses as well. But then, he finds encouragement in a memory that comes to him in a dream. It is the conversation he overheard his parents having the night before they left. To help Ro not worry, Tao had told her Keta is stronger than even himself knows. With newly gained strength gained from his father's belief in him, Keta wakes up and picks up Alpha again, carrying it trough the storm until they finally make it back to his tribe. Nobody can believe what are seeing, and Tao cries as he tells his son how proud he is before taking him and the wolf into a tent to be taken care of. After Keta is patched up and fed, the shaman examines Alpha, quickly realizing what its problem is. Alpha is actually female, and she is giving birth. All the puppies are born safely and healthy, and the tribe welcomes them as part of the family. Years later, once the puppies have become proper adult wolves, they are assigned to hunters as partners and are taken to the next great hunt before winter. Thanks for watching.